where we're going. Hmm. So, quick review, quick refresher. In our last series, Master Series, we talked quite a bit about awakening. To help you understand where you've come from, but also to help you as you're guiding others, if you choose to do that. Most of you will, in one form or the other. It doesn't have to be through lectures or words. It can be through art, through the theater, through science and math and all these other things. But So we it gave you an understanding. We talked about the waveforms. I'll do this quickly, so not as, not as to bore you, but we talked about how your divine waveform, your human waveform, have been in this constant ebb and flow with each other for what seems to be eons of time. They get closer, they move further apart. It accounts for a lot of cycles in your life, and the cycles happen in different patterns, but they happen in cycles of days or months or sometimes years and sometimes cycles within cycles, but it doesn't matter, does it? You've been ebbing and flowing with the human and the divine waveform. You come to a point where these waveforms finally intersect, right here, the X spot, the point of awakening. We talked in several of our last shouts that this area, this, uh, this period here that all of you have gone through, is destructuring. You are destructuring yourself in preparation for moving on. The destructuring almost has to occur. It's very difficult to get around it. Otherwise, if you don't destructure, you're not creating the space for the new, improved you. <laughs> you're just dragging the old you in, and as, how does the saying go, uh, uh, same old whore in the brand new dress. Nice. And <laughs> very graphic. Very graphic. So. So you go through a destructuring. You go through the destructuring, which, which for most of you was really tough. Uh, losing your jobs, your relationship, uh, battles with your aspects, battles with your mind, with yourself. The destructuring was important, though, uh, to get back to some of the core energies of you. You are still having some of the residual effects of destructuring, and you're still feeling it at some times, but you go into this next zone, the quiet zone. Everything gets really quiet as you really slip into this uh, X spot. It gets very quiet, sometimes unnervingly quiet. Where is the commotion? Where is the drama? For those of you addicted to dramas, for those of you who just like to have a lot of stuff going on. Very unnerving. And then you do this thing that will ensure that, assure that you get some drama. You say, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> just because it's quiet, I must be doing something wrong. The other shoe is about to drop. I know it. Every time I've come to quiet before, everything goes to hell. Yes, because you're creating it that way. Something about you doesn't like the quiet. You go into the quiet zone and, and have a hard time handling it, but yet there's something really wonderful about it. It just it kind of doesn't matter anymore. A lot of you have been experiencing it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You start to understand that drama is, is, a, is a really an emotional junk food. You don't, you're tired of the drama. You feel weary of it, and, but you don't know what else is out there. In a way, you're trying to replace old drama with just kind of new, improved drama. Uh, and, but in the quiet zone, there tends to be no drama. That's where many of you have been. Yes, still some old effects from destructuring. Now, based on the consciousness of this group, where we're going, where actually you're at, not just where we're going, where you're at right now, we move into the next step. We move into the next zone. It entails allowing yourself to transcend the old limits of the mind. The mind is probably one of the most adaptable 
programmable and actually flexible and amazing parts of you. Uh, the angels, the angelic beings, do not have minds. So uh, they don't really understand how brilliant a mind is. You now are a body of consciousness with mind and spirit and body and nost and aspects and everything else. It's really, it's really quite amazing. There are, there are non-human, non-physical beings who would kill to have what you have, literally, if they could. Fortunately, they can't, uh, so they manipulate instead. <laughs> they want this. Can you imagine? Just imagine for a moment. Uh, you're an angel. You've never come to Earth. You, but imagine just contemplating having more than just this fuzzy, uh, wuzzy angel being self, very kind of uh, very airy-fairy, I guess is the right word. The integration of a mind, the ability to take on physical form and eventually to be able to be in or out of physical form by choice. By f you have to experience it. You have to really get into it first. They want this. They, they, they want it because it's a, it's a type of fulfillment. It's a type of um, – they feel it, it, the advanced being. That's why I have to laugh when, when I hear people talk about these ETs, these aliens, these advanced civilizations. Until you've been in physical form and had a mind, been here on Earth and learned to integrate the I Am or the God Self, there is no more advanced form anywhere. Anywhere. It's just a bunch of mind junk with, with a being who says they're from an advanced civilization. I highly doubt it. And I've been around a little bit. Haven't met anything more advanced than a conscious human being. Because you have the body, the mind, the spirit, because you are learning right now how to choose. How you want to work with those? Do you want to be physical or do you want to be non-physical? Do you want to be mental for a moment to help figure out something that requires mental, or be the divine? Or how about the combination of all of it? That is the most advanced species in all of creation and can only be found here on Earth and can only be had by experiencing lifetimes on Earth through the birthing process. Whew, I should probably quit right there, but I'm not going to. Because I want to talk about – so we go beyond now. What happens? An interesting thing happens. Some of you have been getting a little uh, clue or, or feelings of this lately. Others of you just started doing it. I've been showing you for months and months this, uh, this very linear horizontal uh, diagram where the Spirit and the Divine finally, cr finally cross the X point, and then they keep weaving in and out. They no longer are separate. They're no longer ebbing and flowing. Now they're interweaving with each other. The only reason why that's significant is because now you have human and you have divine. Uh, in this beautiful tapestry, going together, never, ever, ever to be separated again, ever. You cannot undo this. You can't go backwards, even if you try. So I've laid this out in a very horizontal manner. What happens as we get deep into the X zone and we start going out, horizontal changes to <laughs> It changes to what you would call vertical. What does that look slightly like? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely like DNA. Because DNA ultimately is a physical template of a divine action. It's showing up in your body with strands. There's more than two, by the way. There's a lot. There's a lot. It was known at one time that there were up to 12. And then, as some of you know, there became the 13th with the integration of masculine feminine. Some of you right now are carrying 15, 16, 17 different strands. 
Some of them not really activated yet, but uh, they're, they're, they're in design. They're being architected for things you're going to be doing very, very soon. So now the dance of the divine and the human become – it actually shifts. It actually shifts, because you're no longer on a linear path through life. In a sense, you could say that when the shift occurs, you've set up all the potentials to transcend time and space. And because it's so intimately uh, connected to your DNA, your DNA, the work that you've been doing on the deep levels of your DNA over these last few years now starts to activate starts to activate, and you don't need to do a damn thing. Please don't do anything. You'll interfere with the process. Don't do anything. So th this, is, uh, this is actually very important that, that you've had this flip occur from horizontal, linear, to uh, basically vertical. Energy starts flowing different at that point. It, it flows from above, and it comes up from below. I don't want to go into – I don't want to waste a lot of time in, in, into this, but in the past, you, you've, you've been trying to bring in energy from what you call above, and not much has been going up from below. It's all been staying down there. <coughs> For a reason, you, you needed to continue having that flow of energy into this reality. But you are now at the point where it doesn't all have to flow in here doesn't all have to keep you down here. It starts flowing up. As it does, as these, as these energies go through these, um, uh, these uh, beautiful dancing motions, they obviously intersect with each other. That will come into play later on in our discussions, but they start a, a very interesting dance. At the same time, while, while this basic template is going on, the energy starts running along, uh, along these patterns, and it runs basically in, in all directions. The mind says, well, it, sooner or later they're going to clash. They don't. The, the energies start moving in every which way, but instead of old vibrational energy that would clash or destroy the integrity of each other in kind of a, uh, a destructive way, now they, they start this incredible – well, imagine it as a weaving. Imagine it as a cosmic human tapestry. That's exactly what's taking place within your body and your spirit. The mind has been holding back. The mind has been – had the brakes on, didn't know how to get out of itself was so tied up in using it, the mind tools, it didn't know how to get out. We just did it today. It was that easy. One word, acceptance, some breathing, and then letting it take place. Why is all this important other than I like to write on the board? I like to write on the board because your attention goes on the board. Some of you wonder when I'll ever sit down, particularly Caldra. Your mind is occupied. Your mind is temporarily distracted into all this meaningless stuff, uh, and you're really getting it right here. You're really letting it flow in. I, I have uh, flow monitors around the room, <laughs> assistants who help me, and they, they, they are giving me feedback on the flow. Is it going through? Basically, they're grading me on how I'm doing with my presentation, but these angelic beings are saying, it's flowing. It's flowing. And if you wonder what it is, d don't worry about it. What's uh, your it's, score? It's just it, – it's the con consciousness and energy now moving together. What's con your score? Oh, uh, 100 to zero. Uh, it's consciousness and energy moving together, and that's what it's all about. Remember, consciousness, energy used to be two separate things. They tried to you know, did whatever you could to try to make them work together. Consciousness would call out for energy to try to support its um, desires, its dreams, its its manifestations. But now, what's happening in all of this 
is they don't need to be separate. It, it is truly what I would call holistic consciousness and energy contained in the same vessel, contained in the same dynamic together. And that's what, by the way, we call new energy. They're together. So why is all of this important? Well, it's important here because we have a, a dynamic now taking place. And imagine this, this just keeps going on and on and on. There is a shadow uh, of, the old, of the old horizontal. There's still a shadow of it. It has to be, for a lot of reasons. That kind of intersects through here, but it's, it's but a shadow. It's a reminder. It's a, oh, it's a little marker along the way. What happens right now is these areas here, uh, in, in this dance of human and spirit, these are filled with potentials. Potentials. What is a potential? It's unexpressed reality. The potentials can be grand, they can be small. They can be earthly and human, or they can be totally beyond anything that you've known. The potential is everything that you could be and everything that you could have been. Potentials are not – please, please do not look as potentials as being just something in the future. That's, that's um, limiting. There, when I say potential, some of you think, oh, yeah, what's out in the future? No, no, no. What are the potentials in this moment? What are the potentials for the past? And you said, well, the past was the past. No, 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 no. The past was only one potential that was activated or realized. The past contains potentials that are as dynamic, or perhaps even more dynamic, than the one you picked, or the one that uh, somehow made its way to you. So the past is also filled with – sorry – the past is also filled with incredible potentials that, that aren't negated just because they're in the past. The past contains uh, – well, the past isn't the past anymore, actually. You have to get through that thinking. Thinking. The past has nothing to do with before. The past is in this room right now, all of its potentials, and you are, you are not. You are absolutely not who you think you are. You think that you were born into this certain household and had these certain experiences and traumas, and you think that's you. It is not. It is one potential of you. But what if you are all of these other potentials? These potentials are yours. They don't belong to anybody else. They're not in some grand pool of uh, potentials that you go and, and select from. They're not in the, the potential, the department store potential. They are only yours. That's important also. Let's take a deep breath. What is in here are potentials that are very, what you would say, viable. They have been created by you. They have been imagined by you. Not in your mind, but in your heart, in your soul. They have been imagined by you and acted out in your dream state, some of them. But there is a pool of potentials right here and right here and in every one of these corresponding areas. You could say that you created them from out here and then brought them into here, because here is where, where you're going to start shaping reality for yourself, much like a potter would shape clay into what he or she wants to make it of. And this is where we're going right now. This is next. This is next. And I wanted next written out, 
in a very certain way, we like got it. this, because these parents (parentheses) are symbolic of this dance of mm. spirit. Next, next is going in and not just exploring the potentials, but choosing them, uh, bringing them in. Uh, that's probably going to be one of the few challenges that we have. How do you, how do you get them here? They're, they're there, but how do you get them here? We'll be, we'll be going through that. Uh, so I'm going to talk a lot about potentiating. It's a term. It means that you're actively aware of potentials. And if you don't like the potentials that come into view, that, uh, that you start feeling, potentiating allows you to create any new potentials you want. Any new potentials you want for yourself. We're going to do some group potentiating. And I'm going to ask you in this series, in this next year, uh, let's do it just in a group for, for the world or for other things outside of you. When you're doing your potentiating, do it for yourself. And I know you never follow instructions <laughs> or <laughs> do your homework. But the reason why I ask you to do this in particular is that there, you're going to have a tendency to want to potentiate for the world. Don't do that individually right now. It's going to interfere with your own process of potentiating for yourself. When you can come up here in front of this group and tell me and everyone else that you have become a master of potentiating for yourself, then it's time to go and we'll start doing it for the world. Otherwise, uh, for you to do it for the world and for all these other civilizations. But we'll do an occasional – we'll actually do quite a few potentiations for Earth, for humanity, for all things that uh, connect. Uh, we're going to do some for the near-Earth realms. That'll be fun. Uh, I hate the near-Earth realms. <laughs> oh, there's so much uh, – uh, uh, so much garbage out there. So much garbage. It is polluted with energy garbage. And it's my passion to clean it up. That's my passion to have you to clean it up. <laughs> so. The er near-Earth realms are where beings go after they die to act out their continued, continual dysfunctions. They've forgotten that you go past the near-Earth realms. You go either into the crystalline realms or you go back to the angelic family realms. They hang out, and it's just become what used to be such a beautiful, beautiful place just to – you know, the reason why I don't like it, you and I used to be able to go there. We used to be able to kind of imagine ourselves there when we just needed a little bit of a break, when we needed to get away from the rigors of everyday human life. And it used to be nice and quiet out there, and now it's just filled with garbage. Uh, you can't go there anymore. can't find a quiet spot in the near-Earth realms to save you. So I'm somewhat pulling your leg. 